Looking for experiences that challenge more than just your reaction times? Here are the games that make your brain work a little differently. No matter which game you're playing, your brain is always jumping through hoops. I've already done a stack of videos about how your grey matter is being upgraded at the same time. Your reaction times, aim, recognition abilities and reactions to stress are all quietly being improved while you play. But it's also important to call out the games that do things differently, the ones that stretch your mental muscles in a way that's a little out of the ordinary. I'm talking about the kind of games that feel like they actively prod and test different parts of your brain, like hungry raptors looking for weaknesses in a fence. The ones that force you to pull out all of the connecting wires and plug them all back in, in a slightly different order. Rhythm, logic, portals, they're all here. Oh, and if it's your first time on the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss any of our future videos. For now though, here are the games that make your brain work a little differently. We've done videos in the past about detective games, and it's a genre that we love here at Logitech G. But few of them truly make you think laterally. Instead, it's a case of collecting all the clues and joining the dots. In other words, most of the information is handled in the game, not in your head. But Lucas Pope's Return of the Obra Dinn is different. Yes, you'll have to gather evidence by exploring the game's world, but the systems here force you to think deeply about how you use that information. For once, you have to do the extrapolating. Playing as a 19th century insurance loss adjuster, yes, say that three times quickly, you need to read ship manifests, study photos and faces, and build a structured picture of what happened to the doomed ship. It's similar to Pope's previous game, Papers, Please, in that it's a celebration of all things administrative. And perhaps because of that, it's an arduous, sometimes intimidating task. Especially when you start leafing through the pages you have to fill. Yes we've got work to do. But Obra Dinn is also a uniquely rewarding game. It forces you to parse, document and compile as if you're sat at a lamp-lit oak desk in a Victorian office. Yes, Matt probably has something to do with this bit. But it's satisfying precisely because it's laborious. Every deduction you make is because of your own hard work. And all that thinking and organising will be pretty useful in real life too. And if you've already played Obra Dinn and you want other games to make you think in the same way, why not try Her Story, Telling Lies, or, to a lesser extent, Gone Home, which will get your heart working in a unique way too. Next up, of course Shell's adventures are going to be on here. They literally coined the phrase, thinking in portals. The nice thing is though, that this isn't a marketing tactic or a cheap line about Valve's iconic puzzler. It's the truth. From the moment you land in the Aperture Science Enrichment Centre, you need to think differently, laterally, from a first-person shooter perspective. In essence, the first time you played Portal, not only did you have angry turrets and a psychopathic AI to contend with, you had to rewrite everything in your brain about what you knew about wandering in video games with a gun in front of you. And that's before I get onto terminal velocity, light bridges and companion cube waiting. While some puzzle games seem impossible though, whichever portal game you're playing, things always just seem so doable. Unlike the point and click hell of tenuously linking goats and progression, the solutions to portals puzzles always feel possible. The answer is right in front of you. You just need GLaDOS to taunt you into finding it. But why is that? It would be doing both Portal games a disservice if I didn't take a minute to talk about their effortless tutorials. The tonal whiplash of first-person puzzling in science would be enough to send anyone to A&E if it wasn't for Portal's understanding of, well, your understanding. You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. The learning curve here is a perfect arc, letting you come to terms with each concept before introducing more complicated ones. It's enough to make you feel like you're thinking in a whole new way and are a total master of it at the same time. If you want to know more about the things that games do that you don't notice, hit the link on screen now. Well done. The Enrichment Centre promises to always provide useful advice. For instance, the floor here will kill you. Try to avoid it. 
few of us who play games ever stop to think about the processes that make them run. But Baba Is You, a puzzle game from lone dev RV Hempule Takari, celebrates the logical elements that underpin every single game we play. In much the same way that Obra Dinn loves admin, Baba Is You loves rules. And more specifically, breaking them. But in order to break the rules, you first need to understand them. And the game does an excellent job of teaching you its syntax and systems. Yeah, I just got excited about syntax. Don't rule shame me. Anyway, words and objects in Baba Is You are there to be pushed around and reorganised. By changing certain phrases, you can rewrite the win conditions for a level and move on to the next, excruciating puzzle. This can be as simple as turning an obstacle in a level into the win condition, or more complicated elements like swapping back and forth between controllable avatars to avoid hazards. Essentially, you're rewriting the code for the game as you go. It sounds complicated and maybe even dull, but just think about it. We follow these rules in every game we play without even thinking about it. Food is health, red barrels are boom, light is exit. Baba is you gives you, the player, the opportunity to change these elements on the fly. And honestly, it might just change how you look at games. And if you like this, try Stephen's Sausage Roll and Snakebird for even more logic. <laughs> So, a lot of the games on this list you can learn, you can do some googling or research, and you can become a pro. However, being able to play Crypt of the Necrodancer with skill depends on one thing and one thing only, your inner metronome. It doesn't matter if you have award-winning dungeon crawling skills or an official document giving you a gold star in traversing procedurally generated rooms. If you don't have a regularly ticking internal sense of rhythm, brace yourself games roguelike just isn't the one for you. At least, not with the default character. Maybe that seems harsh, but tapping along to Danny Baranowski's score isn't just fun, but essential. If Cadence's every move and attack isn't on the beat, then she and you won't get far. This is no ordinary roguelike. Thankfully, there's the visual cue of the pulsing heart. But when things get busy on screen, having that innate drumbeat turns out to be pretty, well, key. Helpfully though, all is not lost. If you still want to play, enjoy the soundtrack and not worry about those drum beats, all you have to do is choose the bard character. The necrodancer doesn't seem to care about his heart, so you can happily skip into the dungeons without that stressful failing at music class feeling. If you're looking for other music games that aren't as punishing if you're not a percussion master, take a look at our best music games list. The link will appear on the beat now. Quick, just kidding. They told me I was too young. They told me I needed more training. Huh? I told them to drop dead. Next up, it's time to hand over all the power to the machines. It'll probably be fine. There's definitely not a million horror and action movies about humanity dying out thanks to just that. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. No one ever died by trying to automate hamburger production. Did they? Say hello to Atoma Chef, a game about feeding ingredients into machines and then hoping they spit out all kinds of delicious edibles. I'd say it starts off simple, but it never really does. It starts off simpler than it gets later on. This, like Factorio, is a game about conveyor belts, getting the right things onto them and turning them into cooked ingredients. Raw materials come out of dispensers and you have to get them fired into the food assembler in the right state to produce all manner of fast food delights. And that's only half of it. Not only do you have to program robotic arms only to take cooked meat from grills, you also have to think about how to use space efficiently and keep an eye on how much electricity you're using at the same time. It's time for philosophical questions like why use three automatic arms when you can only use one? This kind of machine thinking absolutely appeals to the logical parts of our brain. There's a unique satisfaction in setting something up and just watching it go. Oh, and if this is all making you too hungry for terrible food, you'll find the same level of automated thrills from Factorio and the drug-fueled delights of Big Pharma. Enjoy sounds like the wrong word to use here. There once was a genius human who dreamed of creating an automated kitchen enterprise like no other. And finally, we'll end on a memory game. 
these really aren't anything new. In fact, they're the kind of games you played before you even touched a keyboard and mouse for the first time. Anyone for pairs? No? Fine. You play as Wilmot. There he is, a happy little square with a passion for stock management. But the important thing here is that not only do you have to remember where you put everything, you also need to work out how you're going to group items. If you're the kind of person who sorts their books by colour or likes organising their socks in a specific way, then this is absolutely the game for you. Wilmot's Warehouse works in a loop as you receive items and then serve them to not-so-patient visitors while the clock ticks down. The most important stage, though, is when new stock arrives, complete with beeping van, and you have to work out where on earth you're going to put it. As you can see, your warehouse starts off pretty empty, but before long you've got stars, eggs, cakes, windmills and flasks arriving. Then you have to ask yourself questions like, do flasks go with cosy things like socks or do they go with food? What about power buttons? Compasses and watches are similar, right? I mean, do I put human shoes with horseshoes? And what makes sense to you might really not make sense to your friends if you're playing in co-op mode. The good news, though, is that every few rounds, you've got the chance to fully reorganise the warehouse. Just remember that you'll have to remember where you rearranged everything to. So that's the games that rewire your brain and make you think a little differently. Let us know if we've missed your favourites in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know exactly when our next video lands.